A lot of things to go over. We have hundreds of pages in court in these documents, and then we also have these really heartbreaking 911 calls mm -hmm. that we're going through. But we also uh, heard a lot of those calls. One of those was even Preston's friend, who you can actually hear telling the operator he was scared and didn't want to see his friend die. Another call to 911 was a young lady who was part of the many who performed CPR on Preston that night of the attack. You can he really hear the fear in her voice. The Halloween party took place in a cul-de-sac in Queen Creek. We heard from neighbors in that neighborhood the day after that Halloween party. They really painted a chaotic picture with kids throwing up in their yards, walking around drunk. Well, today we heard those 911 calls made by those neighbors from that night, and many of them even told the operator they felt like something bad would happen if police didn't arrive quickly. But probably one of the most chilling 911 calls we heard today was of the people who were there at the scene, one of which says he's friends with Preston, who at this point was unconscious. And we do want to warn you that some of these calls are hard to hear and they're distressing. Did you see the, the people that assaulted them? Did you see them well enough to get any description or did you not see it actually happen? Well, they, all had, they all had ski masks on and it was... How many was it? A lot. Like four or five or more? Like 15. Now this friend goes on to add other people at the party told him not to call 911. He said he was scared and he didn't want to see his friend die. And he also mentioned another one of his friends had a broken wrist. When the operator asked if he knew who those attackers were, he said he didn't know any of them and they didn't have any, quote, Beef. While this caller was on the phone with 911, a group of teens were performing CPR on Preston, and they were also on the phone with the 911 operator. Here is that call. You can really hear the sense of panic in their voice. Okay, how old is the patient? About like 17 ish, young kid. Okay, are you able to do CPR if you want to do it? Oh, there's a bunch of certified life cards. There's a bunch of certified life cards okay. right now. We all know how to do CPR. Okay, CPR is in progress. Yes, we don't know, but he, he just got jumped. Now, in Preston's GoFundMe, his family credited that group you heard from there of teen lifeguards attempting to save his life. Unfortunately, Preston died at the hospital just two days later, but the call really shows how these strangers came to Preston's aid in a moment of complete chaos. Now, this call also ties back to some of the documents that we were going through. Several of the witnesses that night reported seeing Preston Billy stomped on Preston when he was already on the ground. So obviously a lot still that we're learning in this case and still a lot more to go through. That's something that we're continuing to do. We've, we've divvied up the uh, court records because there are so many different police reports that it could be everything from like a tipster called in and said that they recognized the Tesla that law enforcement was asking for. But um, I saw one um, and this was days after uh, Preston was beat down where it's they identified goon number one, goon number two, uh, m sending messages with other teenagers and they said, they know who you guys are and he says uh stomped a buddy out no big deal or something talks about him having a gun they're threatening these other kids to keep quiet so it's really kind of troubling but a lot of detail that's coming out naming names showing fit uh photos and videos with timestamps immediately after the attack now you've been talking to the different police chiefs about this in the east yeah. valley what about the section um that came out today is this new the fact that they were telling these 911 dispatchers that something uh, horrible was going to happen if police didn't arrive quickly. Didn't police cruise through that area and get diverted elsewhere? They sure did, and they said that that night they got uh, called away from the party to go um, investigate in a domestic violence attack that was underway, and they told me, the chief told me at that time that um, when his officers drove through, they didn't see any laws being broken at that time, but there were literally hundreds of kids chaos. crowding the yeah. street, and there was a Snapchat invite to that house party, the Halloween house party, saying alcohol Hall provided so there was clearly um, teens drinking in some of the police reports I'm looking at here they're admitting to being drunk that night hiding in the house um, knowing that things were going sideways and sadly Preston died. And also, life. Alexis, you said they were in disguise. They had masks That's on. That's the first time I heard yeah. that. So, yes, this is what we heard from one of those callers. Um, a lot of the court documents also say that there were kind of two groups within um, 
this group of people. So some of them, the even named Talon Vigil, um, he was wearing normal clothes, they said. He was wearing a black mm. shirt. He was not dressed up. He told his friends that he was going to a Halloween party. He would not be dressed up. But then we hear of Tristan Billy, who he met at that party, and we're be being told that he was wearing a suit that night. So that might have been part of his costume. So there's a lot of just different things that people are saying that we're now finally being able to to piece together. So this really is very a convoluted web right right now from, you know, all the court documents, the 911 calls to what we're hearing from from witnesses. Um, everything is now starting to come together and really paint a picture of that chaotic night. It does give you a snapshot of what law enforcement and prosecutors have had to siphon through just the sheer volume of tips and having to vet each one of these reports and claims um, from all of these people and why it's taken five months for us to get um, our eyes on these documents. But yeah, the arrests are underway right now and we're waiting to learn more about how the case is going to progress. And we're still going through those thousands oh of pages, a thousand yeah, pages, yeah. I should say, in the newsroom. So we'll have much more uh, to come here this evening. As for the 911 calls, uh, if you'd like to listen to the the full release of those 911 calls from that night, uh, we've put them on our free AZ Family News app for you to listen to if you'd like.